Prevailing wisdom suggests that an electric vehicle needs more than 200 miles of range to stave off range anxiety and make it useful for more than just commuting. But until now, there's only been one affordable example. The Chevrolet Bolt EV brings 238 miles of range to the table, but now there's a new Hyundai Kona Electric with 258 miles of range. Which of these vehicles is better? Are these finally the affordable EVs that everybody's been waiting for? Before we answer that, make sure you subscribe to our channel and visit Edmunds.com to help find your next vehicle, electric or otherwise. When I first proposed this test in the office, everybody said, why are you putting a Bolt up against a crossover SUV? Well, the Kona Electric isn't really that much of an SUV. I mean, it's only got front wheel drive. There's no all wheel drive version. Then the Chevy's just kind of a tall hatchback anyway, and it's front wheel drive too. I mean, these things are pretty close on paper when you look at the specs. Oh yeah, the wheelbase is identical, and the, the Kona is only about a half inch longer, and both of them have 150 kilowatt uh, electric motors. You know, Chevy says theirs is good for 200 horsepower. Hyundai's number is 201 horsepower, but I'll give it to them because their electric motor makes more torque. Yeah, these things do not look the same at all. No, no, the Kona Electric is both lower and wider than the Bolt, you know, some SUV, right? People around the office are asking, why don't you guys include the Leaf? Why didn't you include the Model 3? Well, the Bolt has 238 miles of range and the Kona Electric has 258 miles of range. Yeah, the Leaf's 150 is just way too short. Right? As for the Model 3, you know, the $35,000 version with 220 miles of range, they're not making it. I mean, we can't compare these two vehicles to something that doesn't exist. Nah, it's just vaporware. Yeah, really. So what are we looking at? Well, at the moment, a whole lot of plastic. But up in here is the electric motor that drives the front wheels. Yeah, I can just see it up there. Right. We move back and there's this big aluminum expanse, the width of the car, really long. This is the battery pack, 65 kilowatt hours of storage. That's like gallons to a gas yeah. tank. And that's what gives it this car 258 miles of range. That's so flat. Yeah, the, the smoothness of this battery pack and the plastic ahead of it contributes to a 14% reduction in drag compared to a regular Kona. That's a lot. Yeah, it's not nothing. And we move back here and we see a really nice multi-link suspension, which gives this car really good ride and handling and also makes room for the battery pack to be as big as it possibly can be. So, so I imagine that the Chevrolet looks exactly the same underneath. Well, maybe. So we're under the Chevy and there's a lot of black plastic underneath here Absolutely, too. Absolutely, but trust me, there's an electric motor up in there that drives the front wheel, just like the Kona. We move back and we see this is the battery pack, but it looks different. It's narrower, it's not as long, but it's almost as big at 60 kilowatt hours, 238 miles of range. So it's gotta be taller, which might be why the Bolt has the roof line that it has. It's also not very smooth under here either. No, it's not. It doesn't look like they paid nearly as much attention to smoothing the airflow underneath here. We move back and we see something different here too. Yeah, this suspension does not look anything like the suspension that's in the Hyundai. No, this is a basic twist beam rear axle, which is really pretty cheap and inexpensive. It was popular in compact cars, mm -hmm. but you know, it's not the most sophisticated suspension for ride and handling. It'll be interesting to see how the two compare when we start driving them back to back. Yeah. And they might not be the same at all. I can't wait to find out. Yeah. So both of these have plenty of space if you fold the seats down, but they have a lot of range so you can go somewhere with a family. So you That's might have four people in this. Where are you gonna put the luggage? Will it fit? I don't like right. how that kind of rides yeah. on the plastic yeah, trim back there. It's a little bit uh, tight. What about the third one? Third one, we're gonna have to put it across. Yeah, no choice there. It's easy enough, but will it shut? Mm. Oh, actually pretty easily. Yeah, that's No okay. problem. But we can lower the floor. Oh yeah, that's right. And it's a pretty dramatic change. Oh, look at that. Yeah. You can stand these things up. It's easy. There we go. On the Kona. Wow, you can already see that the floor is longer here. Yeah, there's more room, 
More width, too. You can probably shove that one in. I think so. And it shuts. Not a problem. Okay. You can also lower the floor as well. Oh, uh, yeah. It's not as deep, no. but uh, it might do the job. Yeah, this stands up. They're out of line of sight. Yeah. You know, if you don't want to drop the basement, this has a little more space, but if you do, there's really not a big difference. Yeah. Wow, who was driving this thing? I was. Well, I got to bring it back. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. How's that? It's okay. You can go back a little farther. I'm actually happy back here. I've got enough room for my legs. I got enough room for my feet. I even have a heated seat. All right, let's go check out the Hyundai. All right. Oh, I'm going to have to bring this one back big time. This isn't so bad back here. Oh, what are you doing? I got to bring it back. Oh, I hate you. Oh, oh my God. Okay. It's power seat though. The other one wasn't. Uh, there's less leg room back here than in the bolt by quite a bit. You think? My feet are starting to go numb. Oh. <laughs> Did you move this forward? I can't get out. <laughs> Now comes the fun part. We've left town and we're in the mountains and we're gonna go up to Crystal Lake. Yeah, and because we have plenty of range, we don't have to worry about range and we're not gonna talk about range. Right, we can think about the normal things that people think about, you know, ride, handling, steering, braking. How fun are these things to drive? Let's find out. Let's take the bolt. Wow, these roads are pretty incredible. Yeah, they really are. What's not incredible is this seat. Feels like I'm sitting on the seat frame. It's really narrow. I'm sitting on it rather than in it. I think I'm overlapping on the right. side of the seat, and I'm with you. My upper back, my shoulders are not happy with the seat. The driving position's good, but the seat itself just feels too small. The interior just feels kind of cheap. It just does not have really attractive materials. I wish they'd put a little bit more money in the seats and the uh, interior panels. The one thing that's really prominent in my eyes, and it's literally in my eyes, is how right. bright and light the interior is. Because there's a lot of shinier light plastics, which now we're in shade and it's great. But as soon as we come back through the sun, like reflections flicker off the windscreen. And yeah, the angle of the windshield is just about perfectly wrong because it, it <laughs> reflects the every detail of the top of the dash. You know, in back into my eyes, it's like I need sunglasses just for that. But you know, that is an option. I suggest that you get the darkest one they sell. You'd have to. Yeah, absolutely. You know what's really cool about this car? Uh, the driving position is great. I mean, the telescopic steering wheel's right where I need it. I feel I can see out really well other than the glare. And uh, the regen on this thing, using the motor's magnetism to slow the car, is really easy. You just flip the shifter and it goes into L. And now when you lift off the throttle, you're slowing down and you're not touching the brake pedal and it's really kind of fun. It's not kind of fun, it is fun. Yeah. I gotta get on a little bit of brakes for this tight hairpin, but yeah, the tires, <laughs> they make a little noise. <laughs> we might be having fun, but the tires don't sound like they're having fun. Low rolling resistance, but that doesn't mean low fun because this thing really changes direction really well. Yeah. And you know, I have really good control of the car's entry speed because of the lift throttle regen. It's really kind of neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these seats though, they're... <laughs> Listen to that. What was I saying? All right, I guess it's your turn to drive, right? Yeah. I'm absolutely with you on the seating position. I can get comfortable in this car very quickly. I like the range that the steering wheel moves mm -hmm. towards you. The seat is very adjustable and... It just isn't... Nice to sit it's on. It's not a comfortable seat. No. This, this could be the like worst seat I think I've sat in that's on sale today. Now I get to make the most of this car's torque. Oh! <laughs> All EVs make torque right from zero miles an hour. Well, it's not just that. This thing's got 200 horsepower. I mean, we can't forget that. No, and it's actually fun to drive. It's not sloppy. That's a tight hairpin. <laughs> And that's a skinny tire. <laughs> that's a skinny tire. But I have to tell you that I'm not using the brake pedal. I'm just using the regen of the throttle pedal because it's it's so intuitive. Back off a little bit to slow yeah. down, twist it to speed up. Oh, and you know, the body isn't rolling a whole lot. I mean, it's rolling some, but any car would on this road. Yeah. But 
You know, that's probably because the battery's under the floor, so the center of gravity of this thing is really low. I will say that I feel like I'm sitting more on top of the car than in the car, which creates more of a sensation of speed. Like, I feel like I shouldn't be driving the car this fast, even though the car feels just fine. The cowl's yeah. really low. The seating position's a little high because you've got the battery under your uh, backside. <laughs> just need some uh, stickier tires, I think. This is way too much fun for an electric vehicle. <laughs> so what's your opinion of the Bolt? Well, I like driving it. I mean, you know, the steering, the handling, it's got plenty of power. The regenerative braking is really fun, actually, even on a challenging road like this. I just don't like the interior. The seats, the way the dash is put together, I'm not a fan of that. But to drive it, it's great. I completely agree with you, and you must not buy the light-colored interior. Exactly. Oh man, right away, I love this seat. It looks good, and it's wide, and it's comfortable. Yeah, we are definitely not in the Bolt anymore. Exactly, and we're a little further apart. This cabin is wide and spacious, too. Mm -hmm. And look at the materials. This thing looks nice. I feel more surrounded. I feel like I'm sitting in the car. Right. Whereas in the Bolt, I felt like I was kind of higher up, kind of perched. And the controls are really nicely laid out. There's the touchscreen, mm -hmm. air conditioning, shifter, and these are the heated and ventilated seat controls. I've got ventil. I'm going to use mine. Yeah, right? Yeah. This also has a sunroof. Bolt didn't have one of those. No. And, you know, the Bolt is the premier. It is the top of the line offering. This is the ultimate, which is also the top of the line mm -hmm. offering. It's more ultimate. Yeah. Uh, something else that's glaringly obvious <laughs> is the distinct lack of glare. Now, this is still a light colored interior, but I'm not getting blinded shiny plastic bits. Right, right. I agree, and as the driver, I appreciate it. The other thing I'm noticing is going into that last corner and some of these other ones, the regenerative braking just isn't quite as powerful as it is in the Bolt. The, uh, that was a squirrel. Squirrel! Oh. I do have three settings. I can adjust it with a paddle here, but I set it to the max and wish I had one more step. You know, this car really feels more substantial. It's wider and it feels like it has a wider footprint on the road. You know, it's a little bit more composed. The tires don't feel like they're working as hard. It's not squealing as much. It's uh, really nicely balanced. I mean, the Bolt wasn't unbalanced. It wasn't bad, but this just feels better. And even there, in that really tight corner, a little hint of squeal, but nothing like the Bolt generated. The Bolt was a little vocal. <laughs> yeah, the transitions feel real nice. Multi-link rear suspension over twist beam. I think we're feeling a little bit of a benefit here. I'd say so far I feel I feel less movement. It's almost like this road is a smoother road than when it was in the bolt. Yeah. Oh wow. That was way better. Whoa. <laughs> no arguing that the Kona electric rides better. I just wish I could get a little bit more lift throttle regen in these corners. It's just not quite there. You know, and the steering in this car feels pretty good. When I drove it in town, I thought, eh, it's a little light. It doesn't feel as distinct on center as the Bolt, and that's true. But when we get up here in these corners, it loads up a, a bit nicer than it does on the street. I still think the Bolt steering feel is a little better, but this is better than it was in the city. So uh, when am I going to get to drive? Right about now. If you listen closely, there's that. Yeah, I think it gets louder when you start moving. Listen to that. It's awesome. Sorry. You're right. Right away, the car feels more solid. It isn't that the Bolt feels the least bit flimsy. It's just I like the way this car feels. I agree with you on the steering feel. It is a little light, but yeah, I like the way this feels through the corner. And I also like the fact that it has wider tires on it as well. It's very noticeable. There's not the tire squeal that the Bolt had. How's the power? Is it just a matter of not having as much power? No, no, that's not it. No, <laughs> power feels more robust, and the Bolt does not feel like it's lacking for power, but the no. Kona makes that power available to you. This has about the same horsepower, 201 versus 200, let's call it equal, but it makes more torque, about 30 more pound-feet than the Bolt. So I think that's what you're feeling coming out of these corners. Mm -hmm. I'll second what you said about the interior of this car. I, I feel like I'm sitting in a more regular car because the Kona Electric is also a regular Kona. It's the same car, and the Bolt was built just to be an EV. 
Right, which usually would make the Bolt a better EV because it's purpose-built, but this doesn't feel like they've made any sacrifices to make an electric car version. Just look at the way the battery is mounted underneath, as we saw yesterday. It's just so well integrated into the chassis. Mm -hmm. You're right about the regen. I wish it was a little bit more aggressive. We have it set at the maximum. We both seem to prefer the way that the Bolt handles it. Well, that was fun. That was really fun. I yep. mean, why wouldn't it be? These are compact hatchbacks with 200 horsepower. Yeah, and we said we wouldn't talk about range. We're still not going to talk about range because we both have over half a charge left. And we're at 5,000 feet. It's downhill most of the way home. Things are only going to get better. So let's go. Let's go. So which of these two EVs is the right one? First, we have to talk pricing. We don't know exactly what the Kona Electric costs just yet, but sources say the base model's price will come in close to that of the base Bolt, and we know with certainty that the Kona will be better equipped. But here's another point to consider. Chevrolet is about to cross the phase-out threshold for federal tax credit eligibility. The Bolt's $7,500 tax credit will shrink by half to $3,750 early next year, then shrink again to 1875 six months after that. In just over a year, it'll be down to zero. Hyundai, on the other hand, is just getting started with EV sales. The Kona Electric will qualify for the full $7,500 tax credit for years to come. There's a lot to like about these cars. Both are more fun to drive than you might expect. They're practically hot hatchbacks. And you can go places and be spontaneous because each offers enough range to make them useful for more than just commuting. We like the Bolt for its superior regenerative braking and more generous rear legroom, but the clear winner here is the Hyundai Kona Electric on the strength of its more sophisticated ride and handling, nicer interior, and longer list of standard and optional features. The extra 20 miles of range it offers is merely a bonus. For more videos like this, be sure to click subscribe and visit Edmunds for all your car shopping needs.